The Sunday on Close Up. Two years after his first try, Jim Lawrence running for Congress once again. But what will be different in 2016? From the crisis of addiction to Medicaid expansion, there were no shortage of issues for lawmakers to tackle and conquer this year. We'll hear from Senate leadership on both sides on what was accomplished and what wasn't in the legislative session. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. Now, two years ago, he really came out of nowhere to mount a late challenge for the Republican nomination in the 2nd Congressional District. But now Jim Lawrence is looking to build on that third place finish, uh, unseat Annie Custer, and then take a seat in Washington. Jim Lawrence is my first guest this morning. Good to see you. Josh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, so uh, your name wasn't mentioned a whole lot like, just a couple of months ago, but then it really kind of happened fast for you. How did you make this decision? Well, Josh, I had been getting a lot of phone calls and emails from all across the state urging me to run. Um, I was hearing all across the state that the voters felt that the issues that I ran on two years ago and the strong 91-day candidacy that I ran that got 20%, almost 20% of the vote in a three-way race really resonated with the voters and was still relevant today. And obviously, the final straw was getting my family's buy-in to run. Yeah, and you have a big family, uh, your wife, and how many, eight kids? Just yes. remind people. Uh, I have eight kids, and you know what? <laughs> I have grave concerns for the future America that those children are going to inherit. Yeah, and when we talked about this uh, a few days ago, you said that uh, when it came to the national debt, that was a motivating factor for you. Well, Josh, the reason why I'm running for Congress is because Washington is broken. The people of the 2nd Congressional District sent Representative Ann Custer down to Washington to do one thing, to fulfill the promises that she made to provide solutions. And instead, Representative Custer went down to Washington and did something else. She supported the Washington, D.C. party bosses. And, well, I mean, we'll see where this goes, but you, you have to concede that she is in a strong position. She has uh, a well-funded campaign. Um, she's in a district that leans Democratic. So how do you win? Especially, and, and let's not forget that you're in a primary challenge against Jack Flanagan, who's been running his race for a while now. Well, Josh, you know, I was a state rep for three terms. I'm also a veteran, graduate of the United States Air Force Academy. Small business owner, proud family man, and parent of eight children. I'm the only major candidate anywhere on the ticket that has all of those credentials. But most importantly, I have grave concerns for the future America that my children and your children will inherit. And Ann Custer has not been effective at leading in her current role. She hasn't addressed the key issues that are important to the New Hampshire families. Like, like for example, $19.2 trillion in debt. It's unacceptable. I can't look my kids in the eye and tell them that I stood idly by and did nothing while the government spent their future prosperity away. That's $60,000 in debt for each and every American. That's unacceptable. And the federal government is still choking the economic engine, the small businesses with overregulation and overtaxation. Representative Ann Custer has not fulfilled her promises to the people of New Hampshire. You know, one of the things that's also threatening a generation, multiple generations actually here in New Hampshire, is obviously the, the crisis of addiction, the opioid and heroin war that we're fighting. Um, what do you think the federal government's approach should be in combating this? Or do you, would you recommend anything different? what's taking place? Well, the federal government should certainly do everything that it could to aid and assist state and local officials. But we have to look at the problem from a serious standpoint. The front line of this battle is going to be in the municipalities, in the localities, in the family communities that where, where this opioid crisis is, is hurting us the most. The front line has to be fought locally. Washington, D.C. can assist. But the heavy lifting, unfortunately, has to go on locally right here in the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, but immigration is obviously a big issue in this race, and a lot of people tie the opioid and heroin war to immigration because of border security. Which brings us to Donald Trump. Where are you with him? I mean, do you accept him, support him, endorse him, espouse him? What do you think? Well, I'm going to support the Republican nominee for president over Hillary Clinton. There's no question about that. And since you brought it up, Two years ago, I ran on a campaign that said that it was a security issue for us to secure that border, to secure our southern border. And I still believe that's a security issue. If you look at the recent stats, most of the illegal drugs seem to be coming across that border. So if we secure the border, that certainly would go a long way to stop the inflow of illegal drugs into the state. You're secure, do you mean augment what's already in place or build a wall like uh, Donald Trump is suggesting? Well, I'm still where I was two years ago. Uh, I want to secure me, it. Refresh us. I want to secure it immediately. And the quickest way to do that is to build a wall or a fence where practical, use electronic countermeasures, and augment that with manpower where practical. 
What about Donald Trump, though? I mean, obviously, he has gotten people fired up for a variety of different reasons. Some people say he's a racist for what he has said about immigration. Uh, but I wonder what your take is. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't know if you publicly endorsed anyone during the, the primary process, but we are where we are now, and Donald Trump is the Republican nominee. Uh, will you be out there championing him, or is this something you just have to... How do you feel about him? That's my question. Well, as I said before, he's the presumptive Republican nominee for president. He is certainly better than the alternative, which appears to be Hillary Clinton. Do I support all of Donald Trump's positions on the issues? No, I, think, I don't think anyone does. But he certainly is more in the line with my view on how the country should go than Hillary Clinton. You word that carefully. Do you think, what's your take of what's taking place here? Uh, because you have, since you announced quickly, you must have been observing this for quite a while and seeing what's taking place. And did this energy or this disdain or anger, however you want to characterize it, help you make a decision to run? Well, certainly the, the outpouring of support that I've received recently certainly uh, definitely pushed me in a direction to run. And what I want to comment on is I believe that a lot of the support that has been coming my way recognizes one thing. They're looking for somebody to lead down in Washington. They're looking for somebody to be effective down in Washington. And the feeling of the voters right now is that what we have in Representative Ann Custer is not effective. But who's calling you? Is, is it, or who was calling you? Was it the Donald Trump people that they were like anything but the status quo? Or was it your old supporters? Or was it a mixture? It was a mixture. It's yeah. all across the board. I had people calling me that weren't really on my team last time. I had people that were on my team last time. I had people that supported Donald Trump and most of the other Republican candidates for president. So I have a broad base support and I'm looking to build upon that and defeat Representative Ann Custer in November. To do that, you got to win a primary first. What kind of primary do you hope you run against Jack Flanagan? And was there anything about his candidacy in particular that motivated you to get in there that wasn't satisfactory to you. Well, I'm going to run a campaign based on the issues. As I said before, the first and foremost primary issues to the families of New Hampshire are dealing with our struggling economy, dealing with our lack of a, a foreign policy. We have the worst foreign policy in decades. We're no safer than we were two years ago. We see that evident in everything that's going on in the world right now. Our allies don't feel like they can depend on us, and our enemies don't fear us. We have an accountability issue with the big, bloated, overgrown, bureaucratic federal government, which doesn't seem to be able to solve the problems of the day. We still have long lines that are unacceptable for our veterans that are waiting for the VA benefits that they deserve. We still have issues with the implementation of airport security by TSA. Representative Ann Custer has not been effective to lead to help the people of New Hampshire and I am prepared to go down to Washington and lead and be effective. Right, we only have a couple of minutes to go here, but so I want to ask you this. Everybody, you know, when they're running a campaign, says a lot of the same things. What is it about Jim Lawrence that's going to be able to go down there and in the 115th Congress and change the way Washington works? I mean, is there something about a message that you think that you can bring that we haven't heard yet? Well, if you look at my track record, um, everything that I've done has been about service. I served my country in the Air Force. I served my constituency in the State House. Um, I developed a small business that the very uh, core of its capability was to help the federal government streamline and cut spending. I've been doing this my whole life, and I want to build upon that experience, take, upon, take on that experience down to Washington, and be more effective to help our federal government become more, effect more effective. And when you're out there over the course of the next couple of months, because September is going to come quick. This primary is going to be up there quick. What are, and you touched on a couple of things, veterans issues, obviously the national debt. What are the issues that you are going to be really hammering home when you say, this is what I'm going to do. This is going to be priority number one when I get down to Washington, D.C.? Well, because fixing the national debt, while it certainly can be a priority, and it isn't easy. I mean, that's going to take some time. No, you're right. We have to stop the growth of government. Government has grown out of control. It's continuing to grow. Under the, the current administration, supported by Representative Ann Custer, they've continued to spend and tax us out of existence. We need to stop that. And I'm going to take my personal experience with making recommendations to streamline the federal government 
and go down to Washington and make recommendations across the board to, at a minimum, stop the growth of the federal government. Well, we'll end this discussion on the fun topic of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, a lot of people fewer than there were in 2014, still say that the Affordable Care Act needs to be scrapped entirely, start over from scratch. What do you think? Well, it certainly has done a lot of damage to our health care system. We've seen the rising costs. I talked about this two years ago. But we see the rising costs. We see the ineffectiveness of the program. There definitely needs to be a change made here. I would be in favor of across the board reforms to make, the, to make our health care system work again. It's very important. So augment, not necessarily disband entirely. Well, how long? You has said the across the board. How, so. I, absolutely. How long has the Affordable Care Act been in place? It's been in place for years. Okay. So it's going to be difficult to untangle that knot. But I'm prepared to take on that challenge. I think it's 2010, but I could be wrong. All right. Well, best of luck to you moving forward. Thanks for coming in this morning. You're Thank filing you, on Wednesday of this week, right? At the State House. Wednesday the eighth. Yes. Making it official. Jim Lawrence. All right. We're going to be right back with a look at the 2016 legislative session with Senate President Chuck Morse and Minority Leader Jeff Woodburn. Stay with us.